Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Acts Part 2, the second lesson of the first video. And we're looking at the 15th chapter of Acts. It's an amazing chapter. It shows us and is a model and a representative of how we as the body of Christ are to function together and how we're to handle some things, how we're to handle conflict, how we're to handle disagreement. What occurred, and we're looking at the first 21 verses here, is that men from Judea, these were believers, as we'll see later on in the chapters, uh, believers came from Judea up to Antioch. And this was no small journey. And they came, and when they came to the church at Antioch, they were teaching that circumcision was required. In other words, they were saying that you had to become a Jew first, you had to be under the law, and you had to be circumcised before you could be a believer in Jesus Christ, be a Christian. Well, Paul and Barnabas debated them with this, and they carried on quite a spirited debate over a period of time. Well, the church decided to send several men back to the Jerusalem to speak to the apostles and the elders and see what they had to say about this. So they go back. And so you see in the chapter that they discussed and that they debated, you see these men that travel from Antioch, you see the apostles, you see the elders, and you see the whole church. That's so important, I think, because quite often in today's world, particularly in the Western church today, there's sort of a mentality that everything is run by one guy that has the vision, often called the pastor. And you don't see that within Scripture. You see a plurality of leadership. And you see leadership, but you see leadership who seeks counsel and understanding from the whole church. And so you saw, you saw in the chapter a series of people popping up saying things. So Peter was the first one. Peter stands up and he says, You all know how the Lord chose me to take the gospel to the Gentiles first. In other words, that he didn't choose the Jewish leadership. He didn't take uh, the, the ones that were Jews first and then believers. He chose Peter. Okay? And he said, what I learned from this is that there's no distinction between Jew and Gentile. And he'd already explained the account and all that had happened to him before with Cornelius. And he says, we're all saved by grace. And so he said, why in the world would you want to put upon the Gentiles that which we could not handle? Remember the verse that said that the Jews had not been able to stand up under the yoke of the law? So why should we put the Gentiles under? Well, then Paul and Barnabas stood up. And they spoke of the signs and wonders that they had experienced among the Gentiles and what God had done. Then James stood up. Now this is James, the brother of Jesus. James, the brother of John, had already been killed back in chapter 12. And he stands up and he quotes the word. So you see a great picture here of uh, uh, Peter who's testifying of how the Spirit of the Lord came upon the Gentiles. You see Paul and Barnabas speaking of the signs and wonders among the Gentiles. James stands up and he quotes the scripture. He quotes the word of God. And he uh, quotes a passage that talks about how God took for himself Gentiles. And so James' bottom line with this is, let's not bother them with this. Okay, Let's not bother with them. There's no reason to put the law upon them. And so they all agree, including the whole church. You see the phrase there, the whole church again. And they decided to write a letter and to send a letter back uh, with the people. And we'll look at the balance of that later, later, who went back and all that. But the letter said four different things. That we think that it'd be good for you to uh, stay away from things contaminated by idols. Stay away from fornication and immorality. Abstain from that. Abstain from things strangled and abstain from things uh, with blood. And you say, well, isn't that part of the law? Isn't this part of the things we're going on? That, that they just said that you don't have to adhere to? Well, you did some cross-references in that. And you saw what was being said. Um, the Lord said that life is in the blood. We're not to eat and drink blood. Life is in the blood. Now, what that means is they were supposed to sacrifice a certain kind of way. We have some great examples of that in the local class, by the way. Uh, wringing chicken necks and cutting chicken necks and things like that. But the idea is you drain the blood out of the animal first. When you cook the animal, you cook it. Now, that doesn't mean that it's uh, against the law to have a rare steak. No, because the blood has been drained out of the animal. The blood was to be used for atonement because life is in the blood. And they're saying just, just abstain from the immoral things, from the idolatry, from the strangling in the blood, and everything will be fine. And our next time together, we'll look at uh, how they received that letter, okay? So y'all keep pressing on. I'll see you then.